Stop worrying about your third shot drop, but you're not going to, are you? So I might as well teach you three things that will help you to be more consistent on your third shot drop. Hey everybody, my name is CJ Johnson and together with my partner, Tony Reg, we are betterpickleball.com. We're here to help you live your best life on and off the pickleball courts. In pickleball, we create this mystique around the third shot drop. Let me ask you this. Do you think that the third shot drop is the most important shot in pickleball? Put your answer down in the comments below. So in terms of consequence to your score, the third shot is not the most important shot. We're going to save that shot for another video. In this video, we're going to get into the things that you need to do to make this shot more consistent. So there are three pieces to every single shot, not just the third shot, every shot that we play. There is the shoulder to the paddle. That's piece number one. Piece number two is your foot on the court. Your feet have to be in the right position to hit whatever shot you're hitting. And then the third one, which you don't hear a lot about, is the foundation. We call it foundation inside of the pickleball system. And it is the piece between the shoulder and the foot on the court. Those happen in every single shot. And to hit a shot correctly, each one of those three pieces needs to be working. Now, I could do a video on each one of those pieces, the footwork as well as the foundation. But for this video, we're going to focus on what happens with the shoulder to the paddle. So what you notice here is the motion is going to come from my shoulder. So Jeannie, I'm gonna have you feed me one so we can show the motion from the shoulder. So go ahead, feed me one. And what you'll notice is the motion comes from my shoulder. The motion does not come from my elbow or my wrist. My elbow may be bent. It's okay to have your elbow bent. It doesn't have to be straight out in front of you. It's okay to have your elbow bent, but the motion doesn't come from a bent elbow or from the wrist. So Jeannie, I'm gonna have you feed me one. I'm gonna show the motion from a bent elbow. So if I'm here, I don't want the motion to come strictly from the elbow. That's gonna change the face of the paddle. And on, like on that one, the loft was way over Jeannie's head, okay? Uh, definitely an attackable shot. It also doesn't come from the wrist. So go ahead, Jeannie, feed me one more. I wanna show the motion from the wrist. So here, it doesn't come from this. There's, now that landed inside of the non-volley zone and it probably wasn't attackable, but that's not a repeatable shot. These are small muscles, so I wanna make sure that the motion in these are coming from my shoulder. This is the key driver for the third shot and that's what'll help you to be more consistent with your shoulder to paddle motion. So the best way to work on that shoulder mechanic, to make it consistent, is to think about this shot as being more of a toss versus a hit. So a great way to start to understand this concept and to really feel what it's like is to take your paddle out of your hand. So Jeannie, put them off to the side so we don't step on them. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna start here. We're gonna start at the non-volley zone. And the reason that we start here is because the motion is essentially exactly the same no matter where you are between the NVZ and the baseline. The follow through is just a little bit bigger. By starting here at the non-volley zone and getting that feeling of the toss so that we know that the, the swing is coming from the shoulder will help us to create the correct feel so that as we move further away, it becomes more automatic for us. So we're gonna go ahead, Jeannie, and toss the ball. I'm gonna grab the ball. I'm gonna toss the ball back to Jeannie. And what I really wanna feel here in this toss is I wanna feel this coming from my shoulder. You're gonna notice I'm not doing this. Jeannie's not doing that either, right? That feels strange if you do it with your arm 
or if you do it with just your wrist without your shoulder moving. It's very hard to be consistent that way. So here, all we're gonna do is just simply toss. Now, what I can do again is I can take a couple steps. Jeannie's gonna stay where she's at, or she's going to stay there, and I'm gonna take just a couple steps back, and all I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna do the same thing. So for me to get it all the way to Jeannie, I have to make a bigger toss. By the way, Jeannie's also practicing her third shot, right? Because she has to start, she has to take, uh, make a bigger arm swing from her shoulder to get it back to me as I move further and further back. So I'm here and now I can move further back. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna toss again. I need to have a bigger follow through. You're gonna notice that my follow through has gotten bigger and bigger as I'm going back. I'm gonna go back further again. I'm getting closer and closer to the baseline. All I'm simply doing here is I am tossing the ball back to Jeannie. And that always comes from my shoulder. So I'm here, I'm tossing the ball. It's coming from my shoulder. So start first with the toss. All right, now we got our paddles back. <laughs> I let Jeannie have her paddle back too. And what we're gonna do is we're really gonna do this same exercise, but we're using our paddles and we're really focusing on the motion coming from the shoulder. Again, your arm, it's okay for your arm to be bent as long as you're not driving, you're not making the motion from the elbow or from the wrist. We're focused on, on the shoulder. So let's start with some dinks, Jeannie. So she's gonna go ahead and she's gonna feed me. And what I'm really focused on is I wanna hit a couple nice solid dinks here. And what I'm really focused on here is the motion coming from my shoulder. Now, as we do this, I'm gonna to start to take a step back. And this is just a practice drill. This is not something that you're necessarily doing on the court. I am trying to just keep this motion. I wanna keep the feeling like this, just consistency, right? I just wanna be consistent. My follow through is getting a little bit longer as I get further away from the net but I'm trying to keep this stroke consistent and coming from the shoulder. So uh, go ahead, Jeannie, feed me here. So Jeannie's feed me here. Not quite as consistent on that motion. Gotta move my feet, maybe a little elbow there. Woohoo! Jeannie's really challenging me, right? So this is, as I'm moving around the court, these are all drop shots that you're gonna need to use from any place on the court. So really here, you're not just practicing your third shot drop, which would be the one back at the baseline. You're practicing how you would drop from the transition area. So again, for this drill, start here, get comfortable with this, and then move backwards. As you move backwards, make sure you're not dragging your feet. Make sure that you are on the balls of your feet moving. All right, now what we need to do is you need to have the right shot in order to get consistent. You need to be selecting the right trajectory for your shot. And too often players think that the right trajectory is the tra a trajectory uh, that skims the net. What you're gonna notice is I'm back here. You'll see over by Jeannie, we've got a bright orange target down on the ground. But obviously in between the two of us, we've got that net that we have to get over. So in just a second, Jeannie's gonna give me a feed and I'm gonna show you what I see most players doing. So I'm here, most players want to do that skimming the net type of shot. They're looking for that low trajectory shot because they think that that low trajectory shot is what it will make the shot unattackable. Here, and I'm trying to skim the net. Jeannie, help me out if you would. Let's show players, I think most players think that they only have about half a paddle head to uh, clear the net. So come on up to the net. Put your paddle so it's like half a paddle head to the net. Most players think that that is what they are trying to do in terms of skinning, skimming the net. At most, they think they have a whole paddle head. So bring it up just a little bit higher. At most, most players think that that's what they're aiming for. And that is really not true. When we're hitting a third shot, go ahead, Jeannie, you can go back to where you were. When we're hitting a third shot, we wanna put a lot more loft on the shot because the more loft we have, 
the easier it's going to be to get to that target. So I want you to think about um, uh, what, we, what we just did in terms of the toss. Hey Jeannie, will you throw me a ball, knock me a ball back here, um, and we're gonna do the toss. If I am trying to get to that orange target, I don't, I'm not gonna take this ball and just throw it like a bowling ball. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. What I'm gonna do, can I have another ball, Jeannie? What I'm gonna do is if I'm trying to get to that target, I'm gonna take my toss and I'm going to loft, even though that didn't go over, that had the right shape. I lofted that shot and I have a better chance of getting to the target if I have loft on that shot. We're so afraid of being attacked that we don't add enough loft to the shot, to the third shot, to get it over. And the first step in becoming more consistent is get the shot over. Even if it's attacked, get the shot over the net. After that, we can work on the amount of energy that's in the shot. We can reduce the energy that's in the shot once you have that feel, and that's what'll make it less attackable. But the first thing you have to do is create the right trajectory to get it over the net. Okay, Jeannie, let's show them what that looks like. What you need to do now is do one T-A-T. -T. In the pickleball system, we call that one thing at a time you will become a better player if you are more focused on what you're practicing. If you take all three of these tips to the court and try and implement them all at one time, chances are you're going to go nowhere fast. You'll get there much more quickly if you pick the one that you think is your biggest uh, area for improvement and apply that to your game. Start with that one first. Now, if you'd like more tips on the third shot drop, check out this playlist over here. It's all third shot drop tips because together we can train smart, live bold, and age well.